Goldinog, and the Three Empaths. Once upon a time, there was a narcissist called Goldinog. She went for a walk in the Forest of Empathy, as she had heard that there were always some fresh victims she could find there. Pretty soon, she came upon a beautiful cottage. She didn't bother knocking. She never did, and in accordance with her sense of entitlement, she just pushed the door open and walked in. She found the interior to have all the trappings of empathy. There was a large doormat with welcome written on it. There were various books about spirituality, self-improvement, how to look after other people, to understand the universe, on a set of shelves, and the decor was relaxing and not showy at all. I wouldn't live here myself, she sniffed, as she wandered through the rooms until she entered the kitchen, where she saw three bowls of soup on the table. Feeling hungry, and knowing that she had an inalienable right to commandeer the resources of another, she tasted the soup from the first bowl. Yuck! What a cheap and nasty tasting soup! spluttered Goldinark, and she tipped the soup onto the floor, smiling at the dismay that the owner of the house would surely experience, and thus she gained some thought fuel. She moved on to the next bowl. Ugh! Cabbage soup! Clearly someone is trying to lose some weight. Obviously not as beautiful as me. I don't need to eat this crap, she announced, and poured the contents onto the floor also. Goldinark turned to the third bowl. This bowl was beautifully designed and set with small, precious stones. A silver spoon rested in it, and Goldinark scooped up a mouthful of the soup. Oh, that is delicious! A bowl of butter jumps over the wall. Yum, yum! Goldinark ate it all up. When she had finished, she suddenly felt restless and annoyed. I enjoyed that soup, but whoever made it thinks they can make better soup than I. I hate them. So, in a fit of ignited fury, she smashed the ornate bowl on the floor and bent the silver spoon in her mouth before dropping it onto the table. After scoffing the bowl of Buddha Jumps Over the Wall soup, Goldinark decided that she needed to sit down and watch some television. She moved to the living room and found a small wooden stool. Hm, I am not sitting on that. That is a stool for a peasant, she sneered, and slammed her foot down on it, breaking the wooden stool. Her eyes alighted on an armchair with a cushion which looked rather comfortable. She tried sitting on it, but it felt lumpy. Scowling, Goldinark jumped up and ripped the cushion apart as she called the chair various names, slashing at the fabric with her long red nails. Just then she saw a throne. Aha! That is far more to my taste, she remarked. She settled on the throne and felt most at home, as she imagined how people would admire her as she sat resplendent and noble. After a while, however, she became bored, because there was nobody there to see what she was doing. So she stood up and took a knife from the kitchen, and she carved her name into the throne. Now, since it obviously belongs to me, everyone will know it is mine, and therefore nobody else is allowed to sit in it, she said smugly. 
Goldenheart gave a yawn. All this malicious behaviour was tiring, but she also felt weakened because nobody was around to see her machinations, so she decided that she would head upstairs and have a nap to await the owners of the cottage, who would surely be home soon and available to provide her with some much-needed fuel. Once upstairs, Goldinart found three bedrooms. She entered the first and found a very small bed in an extremely tidy room. That bed is no use to anybody. Pathetic, she declared, and tipped it over before knocking over the carefully placed bottles, books, and other trappings of the bedroom's owner, making a right old mess. She went into the second bedroom and found a bed of nails on the floor. Hmm, mused Golden Ark. This must be a martyr's bedroom, but there's no way I'm sleeping on that. She hitched up her skirt, and she never wore any panties because she was such a slut, and peed over the bed of nails. Try sleeping with that pong, laughed Golden Ark. Golden Ark went to the third bedroom and pushed open the door to see a massive bed, and inside of it lay seven small men. Oi! shouted Golden Ark, causing the dozing men to wake with a jolt. Aren't you in the wrong story? she asked as the bewildered little men all sat up and stared at her. "'Begging your pardon, miss. We were just having a rest. We'll be right on our way this moment and out of your story,' said one, a handsome fellow with shining eyes. "'Not so fast,' grinned Goldenark, as she closed the door behind her. "'You are just what I've been looking for.' "'Please, miss, we had best be getting back to our mistress.' She'll be worried about where we are, remarked another of the men, who had a carefully trimmed beard and a diamante earring. The men started to move, trying to clamber out of the sumptuous bed. Oh, I don't think so, cried Goldenark. I know who you are. Goldenark then pointed at each of the little men as she called out their names. Soulmate, angel, light of my life. Flower in bloom, the one, my saviour, my true love. As she said each name, the little men each became transfixed, a loving and helpless luck coming over their faces as they were ensnared by the charm of Goldenark. Smiling, Goldenark started to remove her dress as she made her way to the bed and the waiting little men. Some time later, Goldenark lay in the centre of the bed, surrounded by exhausted little men, all of whom had fallen asleep once again, drained of their fuel. Goldenark was asleep also, a smile of a degree of contentment plastered on her lips, her golden hair spread out across the pillow, as she slept the sleep of the oblivious righteous. Meanwhile, the three empaths, Honesty, decency, and integrity had arrived home at their cottage after a hard day of assisting at the soup kitchen, collecting for an orphanage children, and feeding stray animals on the streets of a nearby town. They were jolly hungry after their charitable exertions, and made straight for the kitchen. "'Goodness me! Someone has thrown me piper's broth on the floor!' remarked Honesty. "'Goodness me!' "'Someone has thrown my cabbage soup on the floor as well,' remarked Decency. "'Okay, goodness me, someone has eaten up all my butter jumps over the wall "'and smashed my bowl and bent my spoon,' said Integrity. "'They made their way to the living room in search of clues, "'as they were all, of course, truth-seekers. "'Oh, my, someone has smashed my virtuous yet useless stool.' cried Honesty. Oh my, someone has shredded the cushion on my comfy old chair and torn huge tears in my armchair, cried Decency. Okay, someone has etched the name Goldenark into my throne. Who would do such a thing, declared Integrity. Someone called Goldenark, just a guess, said Honesty quietly. 
In search of the Vandal, the three empaths went upstairs. They reached the first bedroom. Oh, heaven to Betsy, cried Honesty, as he looked in on his overturned bed and trashed bedroom. The Feng Shui has been desecrated. They reached the second bedroom. Sweet Jesus and the baby orphans, cried Integrity, as he smelt the ammonia of Goldenark's urinary insult. My room stinks! They reached the third bedroom and tentatively pushed the door open to see the naked Goldenark surrounded by the seven naked little men. Goldenark awoke instantly and stared at the three empaths. Poor thing! She has no room at all with those dwarves hogging the bed, cried Honesty. Poor thing, she'll catch a chill without some night clothes, cried Decency. Oh, poor thing, judging by the looks on those dwarves' faces, they've stolen her innocence, cried Integrity. Damn right, cried Goldenark, seizing the moment and putting her hands to her face in mock horror. These evil little bastards poured soup on the floor, and smashed a bowl, broke a chair, ripped up a cushion, shredded an armchair, vandalised the throne, trashed a bedroom, pissed on another bed, and then dragged me in here when I tried to stop them wrecking the complete cottage, and, and they, oh, had their wicked way with me. Help me, please. And so it came to pass that the seven dwarfs received jail time for an array of crimes, and the three empaths told Goldenark under their wing, providing her with a steady stream of fuel, traits, and residual benefits. But nobody lived happily ever after. <laughs>